What's up everybody so a bit of a different intro there that time let me know if you like it i wanted to try something new and we're gonna jump back into this match but as you can see there was some uh some fairly frustrating stuff happening in this match so we're gonna dive in and see uh how that unfolded and how that wrapped up so thanks for being here with us today Here's our lag. And if you like that intro, definitely drop a subscribe. You're going to be seeing more higher quality video editing as I get better at this. Um, or if you are not new to the channel and been around for a little while and want to continue to see this stuff, definitely drop a subscribe. So let's get our scorecard back up. And starting off with nine ball as you can see and i'm playing against let's get the skill levels updated here playing against nathan who's somebody i have played before and you'll see you would have seen him in a previous video this is master so there are no skill levels it is just a race to seven All that updated. Up a little bit. So yeah, just jumping right into this first game. Make a good hit on this one ball. There's a lot that can go right with that shot. Um, kind of hoping to drive it into traffic or potentially make something. This was my third match of the day. So I came in pretty strong. Um, confidence was high. I had come off of two good games before that. I don't want to give away the results. Um, you'll see those in future videos. But yeah, third one of the day. I think we were trying to make that ball there. Might have had enough of it to make it. Kind of hard to tell. Um, but leaves me... In kind of a touchy spot here, the kick is definitely on from the backside, and that's what I'm looking at here. And I wanted to see if the one ball drives off the six and kind of throw down. Depending on how it's cut, it might come up. It's not going to really get close to that nine ball, but I want to make a good hit and see if we can make something happen here, which we do. Seven ball goes in. And we end up not quite frozen to the one. I don't think enough room to cut it. And again, like I said, coming in with confidence here, I was feeling good that day. So I wanted to make sure I was keeping my stroke open. We're going to go for making balls whenever possible. That ball cuts. Luckily, this table was playing fast enough to make that thin cut. To be able to drive the two ball down the rail. Uh, the four, eight, um, or sorry, you wouldn't be able to make it from that side. The three, eight to the four doesn't go. So I think I just end up lining up on a safety shot on the three. And this is a new strategy I've been thinking about recently, where early in a match, if you've got open shots, take the open shots. But if you want to test the speed of the table, if you want to maybe test your opponent a little bit, play a few more safeties than you might normally, maybe not go as offensive, get a feel for things. And especially playing that type of early match defense can throw your opponent off. So I did leave a hit on the three ball. There's an edge here. So he lines right up on it, and he's going to try to maybe just create some distance. Doesn't work out too well. Makes a good hit, obviously, but has left me a good shot on the three. And what I'll have to do is try to curve off the three and bring it back down to make sure I have a look at the four ball. 
I think there what I was looking at is if I ran into the eight. I'm not sure if that's really possible from here, but we just want to get back down on this back side of the four. And they were close enough. They weren't quite dead lined up. They weren't frozen either. So it's a little bit of a cut to drive the eight ball towards the pocket. And you can tell my pace is a bit more rapid. I've been working on that a lot in my game. I don't want to give myself enough time to overthink things. I'm going to trust that automatic process. So a bit of a cut there. Almost overcut the eight ball. Um, you can see the eight went in on the left side of the pocket there. But we're still okay here. Long straight in shot on the four. And I do like these, especially if I'm feeling like I'm in stroke. So just pop this in. Nice. Good kind of punchy follow stroke there. I like the feel of those. Reasonably straight on the five, but you can draw back to get shape on the six. I get right down on that. Still following my same pre-shot routine, but I'm not spending nearly as much time deliberating over different options. I think that's the thing. Once you get deeper into your game, once you've been playing for a while, you kind of know what to do, right? You can trust your game and trust your stroke. And when you play that way, you're more likely to get into that sort of flow state. Nice, so there's first one down. My break wasn't really cooperating with me on this day. That's actually a good, quite a good break for nine ball. You could see the cue ball kind of squatted in the center. Got a good spread, made a ball. Got a bit unfortunate with the kick, but I was starting to kind of dial in my break. You'll see as the match gets a little deeper that the break starts to fall off a little bit, but that was, that was well struck there. So the push shot exists in Masters, and this would be a good time to take the push shot. As a rule, you don't usually want to push into an offensive play. So in this case, the one ball doesn't go past the eight, so I'm basically challenging him to play a defense, which he does. There's a simple enough defensive shot option here. but I knew that if he played this defense, the kick would be easy enough. So there's a bit of that chess-like strategy going back and forth. I know that if I do this, my opponent might do this, in which case I'll do this. There's not enough line to drive the one into the nine here, I don't think, but I do make the kick with a bit of pace. The six ball threaten the side pocket, as you saw. So just trying to make something happen there. Let's my opponent back to the table, but at least without ball in hand, make a good hit. So that one, I'm not too sure if he was trying to make it inside and missed it, um, but it ended up going up along the long rail and gets tucked behind the eight. I've got an edge on the one, so this is another defensive play. Trust your speed and put him behind something. Good one. Got him blocked behind the two. For some players, this might be a jump shot. Um, it's an easy enough kick, and that's what he's looking at here, going to the long rail first. Kick and stick is on if you wanted to go two rails and get behind the one, send the one back down table. He made a good hit in this case, but unfortunately sold out the one. And so now I've got an open layout. And what I was looking at here, I'll leave this marked. This is my eventual shape for the seven, so I'm already thinking about where I want to be on the seven. Just making sure that the seven had a pocket and that it had a good line to take me towards the eight. Nothing too crazy here. Just want to get behind the three to send you towards the five. I got a little straighter on the three than I want, but I'm going to take advantage of the big pockets. I can sort of punch over for the five. Kind of winding up for the punch. Yeah, punching out to the left side. A bit of draw, too, to open up that angle. Playing closer to the line of the shot on the five. And we want to float down for the seven. So you can go high inside here, high right. For those of you who don't know about inside versus outside English, sometimes we'll refer to shots that way. Inside is towards the pocket, basically. Outside is away from the pocket. 
So on that shot, inside English on the five ball, to the right, right hand English towards the pocket where I was making the ball. So same same deal here, high inside to try to roll up and through. Not a ton of inside, I guess, or maybe I just lost it on the nine. But I knew I was going to make the seven, and the cue ball could bounce back down. A little bit of a tester here on the eight ball, but bear down, kind of punchy draw stroke to float back down table. Make sure you get the cut angle on the nine. Good stroke there. Nice and easy. On the nine ball here. Good one. Yeah, that's the pace, right? Like, I'm just kind of chewing through these. I changed my break, which is weird based on how well the last one worked out. And yeah, I got I got a bad result. I got lucky. <laughs> uh, super lucky that the cue ball came back and dressed up for a 1-9. But you saw the action on the draw shot that it just ripped off. I hit too low on the cue ball, so the little bit of draw that was on it ripped me off. Came back to the short rail and bounced back down. So... Lining up the 1-9 here, nothing to apologize for. This is this is how the game works. And you want to take those wins when you can. You also don't want to take these combos for granted. So I played it with a bit of pace there just to make sure that I'm putting it down and that if for some reason the 9 doesn't go, great distance on the one ball. Went back to the side rail. Pace was good. A little bit of a hop on the cue ball, but my aim was a bit off a bit off to the right hand side of that head ball which caused the cue ball to drive towards that top long rail but we're looking okay in this case i've got a shot on the two the four to the five is kind of the key so the plan was yeah to draw back over and bounce out i was going to use this rail to send me into the line of the shot but underplayed it just slightly. I was super close, though. If I had gotten past the six, I think I would have had enough angle to play the four and draw back down for the five. That was the original intention. Trying to hold that the cue ball off the two would have been kind of touchy. And then you're left with a long cut shot on the four. But not overthinking this one. You want to dig down to make sure you get over the six. No. So not quite high enough on the cue ball to get the right elevation. So bad hit there, giving up ball in hand. But momentum is uh, in my favor at this point, right? We're three up in pretty rapid succession. And he's got a little bit of work to do here, nothing crazy. So just follow forwards with a five. Easy shape. It's a big window on that five ball. That one's well played. High inside to steer around the nine. Then on the six, you just kind of judge the speed. Big window for the seven. I mean, really anywhere in here is going to be fine. But ideally, you want this side of the shot line to take the 7 and drive you towards the position on the 8. So he came a little fuller into the 6, but second rail is going to help him out. So just a follow shot on the 7, which works, and he's got... Good shape on the eight. Got to kind of pinch the eight into the side. Maybe just draw back for the nine, play short side on it. Yep, a little bit of a pinch there. And kind of a tester. To me, it seems like he's rushing this one. I, I would take a breath on this ball. Oh, yeah, overcut it. But kind of getting away with it, too. So leaves me long. There's not a cut available here. Natural lineup for me would be this long rail bank back where the cue ball is, bottom right. And I'm taking a breath on this one. Make sure I gauge this properly. 
just enough cut. Don't need to mess with spin too much, but a little bit of outside helps. Yeah, so I either cut that wrong or didn't use the spin that I needed at that cut. So unfortunately, didn't take that game away from him. And remember, this was all after that miss on the four ball position window, giving up ball in hand. So in my mind, by rights, <laughs> I should have lost this game. Oh man, but yeah, he didn't clutch up and make that nine ball and sells it out. Leaves it hanging over the corner. So should have lost this one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take this. That's, that's how it goes sometimes. Gets me up to four. See how the break works. About the same as last time. Good action on it, but just aiming it a bit off. Might be a tip left contact kind of issue where it's deflecting off. This is going to be a push again. Put him up on that short rail. And in this case, I'm leaving the cross side bank, which might be playable. Some, some players would go after that. There's definitely safety options here, right? Split him behind the six or send the cue ball down table. I don't remember what he does here. Let's see. Looks like he's attacking. Yeah, he tried the cross side. And one ball does not cooperate for a 1-7 combination, but the back cut on the one is available for the side pocket. I'm going to thin that in. little too much pace. <laughs> it would have been nice to get closer to that two ball for a back cut. But we're pretty far away from it now and bridging over the seven. Awkward queuing. But I'm going to go for the back cut, I think. Yeah, not great contact. So he's got got a pretty open situation here he's just got to think about getting good on the five and the two if you dig into this ball the two does naturally send the cue ball down table or you can kind of follow forwards and open up the line a little bit you know judging your speed on that one getting in behind it's possible i guess you could try to play short side see how he's queuing on it, but we'll see the result. Yeah, he goes to dig through. He's got to look at the five, see if he can cut it. Probably can. Yeah, he had enough of the cut. That works out. Nine stopped him. He put a bunch of pace on that, but the nine blocked him. Kept him in a good line for the six, seven. And you want to make sure you judge this so that you end up with a shot on the six afterwards. This is a good habit here. You line up on a combo. Yeah, just some speed control. Don't need to mess with any spin or anything. Oh, somebody jumped on the camera. Uh, so misjudged the cut, unfortunately, on that six. And I'm not sure if maybe he was just thinking too much about position or, or what happened there, but he's left me open shots on the six and getting to the seven. And a stop shot works perfectly well here, but at this point in the day, I was confident i was feeling good about that draw shot wasn't worried about the thin position window behind the nine ball this is another one very similar stroke you hit the seven pretty full on and draw back for the eight you want to be up here for the nine I hit that bad i don't really know i remember that one and i think i just let up on the stroke sort of silly but 
not a huge deal because I've been in this position many times and usually what I'll play is this bank shot with the expectation that if I miss on the low side, it sends the eight back up into kind of a tough location for them. Nice. Yeah, aiming on the low side, but pocketed that one. And the shape on the nine is okay. It's a thin cut into the side, but sort of a similar situation here where if you undercut it with the low side of the side pocket, it'll send the object ball away. Obviously, you don't want to plan for that, right? You want to visualize making it, but... Yeah, you just want to make it. Puts us up to five. Pretty good break there. Still coming off that right side. Top side as we're looking at it now. Even from the left side of the table, because I changed... I'll read the rack and look for the L patterns if they're available and changing the side still sent me to that top side. So I got to work on it. I got some work to do on the break. Yeah, I think I was trying to curve it around the three ball. Going aggressive there, just trying to make the one it's risky, but Sometimes it's worth going big on those. So he's looking at the four to judge if the four goes past the six. And sometimes you can sort of slide them off. You play it into the rail here and it'll still cooperate and go in. Especially if you hit it at the right speed. But he's got to get on the four first. And it's a small window under the eight or between the eight and the nine. So you have to get really good on the three. He's got some work to do for sure. Bit of draw, don't think that was intentional. Probably wanted to just stop it there and then draw off the three. So he'll have to run through this one Bit of force follow. Successfully gets him back down table. But he's behind the six. I remember this shot. Kind of a crazy hit. I know the camera's blocking it, but... He gets a good hit on the four, and then he knocks something else in, I think. Yeah, there's a shrug. I forget what it was. The four went in. Uh, so, somehow... <laughs> He got the hit on the four, and then I think it banked back in the side. This is the five ball, though. So long shot on the five. You can draw this ball. You could send it across table to try to get a line on the six, but it's tough. So what I immediately look at is trying to draw back down somewhere into here and this takes a pretty aggressive draw stroke long bridge Ugh. so good cut on the five the contact on the five was okay but i don't think i had enough action on that draw stroke and sends me right to the side and he's got a four ball out with ball in hand Got to get good on the seven. Seven doesn't go over here. Seven does go here, of course. So yeah, I think rolling around the six to get up above the seven would be the play. Some players might be tempted to just stop the cue ball here and take a long shot on the seven. Unnecessarily complicates it, I think. I would definitely be putting the cue ball here and rolling around. Yeah, he goes for the long shot. Which is fine if you get a straight line on the seven. It'll still work out.
He's lining it up, aiming it in the side. And it cooperates for him. I guess he was worried that coming off the seven, playing it in the corner would send him close to the eight and nine. This gets good on the back side of that nine ball. Taking a bit of extra time on the nine, which is good after that last one that he missed. Goes down. All right, Nathan's on the board. Okay, the one comes in cross corner. Got a bit of the edge of the six in his way. Enough of the two ball to hit it though. Tucks it in behind the nine. I can go rail first. At this point in the game, my mood is still good. My confidence is still good. The scratch on the five ball was kind of silly, but it's not a big deal. It's it's not going to be tanking my mood by any means. I am wanting to just get back into a rhythm here, but no offensive options. Got in behind the nine, which was good. Drive the cue to the, the two ball to the short rail, so it makes it a good hit. And... He doesn't have great options here. The back cut on the two is available. It's an aggressive, really thin back cut. I think a lot of players would be tempted to go safe here. Certainly if I'm looking at this, I'm sending the two ball back up this way and trying to tuck the cue ball back in behind the eight. You just play the cue ball on that shot. Yeah, you try to cut it. <clears throat> cut was there. And sends me... All around the table, seven's blocking. There is a bit of the edge of the two ball. This is gonna be a jump. Just wanna make a good hit on the two. Had a good jump shot this time. Missed that four ball earlier in the match. Good hit. We make something happen. Not this time. Just dress him up a nice shot on the two. And he's he's got some work to do here, especially between what was that, the four and the eight. Jump four and the seven? What is that there? Yeah, four and the seven. Not a great open line on the three. And certainly combo into the eight. You're pretty likely to come away with a shot if you play the three to the eight. You stay aggressive here, though. Safeties are possible, but it's a bit harder to ensure that you're going to lock up your opponent. Yeah, I think he's lining up the three eight. If you make it, the three is likely to stay in this area. And the cue ball is going to want to come over to that long rail. Like I said, you should come away with something. Oh, it didn't go. It's wild. This was a super, super thin cut on the three. It barely moves. You can see it, though. Uh, so I have to basically skim off the left side of the three to touch in the eight. And these can be hard to judge. I think I get spicy with it, though. I think I use some spin, which is not necessary. Yeah, super, super thin on the three. Turn the cue ball loose just a little bit. Luckily, the three is in a makeable position. I've got enough of the point that I can run the three down the rail. Come over to look at the four, which definitely goes, but I have to be above it. You don't want to be back cutting that four ball. So I'm kind of going low on the three to hold it a little bit. Bit of a drag. Pulled back too much, but cut the three well and ran right up along the rail. So I am back cutting the four. It still goes. You're going to be running into the seven, but the tendency is to undercut this ball, which 
do. That one's frustrating. <laughs> I think I rushed it a little bit, so I remember coming away from that one feeling frustrated. We're still good, though, like big picture, you know, you look at your performance, you look at the score, whatever you need to do to reassure yourself that you're, you're in the game, things are fine. You're up 5-1, dude, like it's okay. You got good shape on the 5, though, right? He drove all the way down and got up above it. 6 to the 7 pretty much takes care of itself as long as you give it enough pace. Which he does. It's good on that. Duval naturally comes toward the 9 after you make this. Might have wanted a bit more, but still okay. Bear down on this 9. Which he does. Takes another game. So he's he's clutching up. So he came a little thin off the 1. Left side of the 1. And here's an opportunity. These are the ones that I like. I say it all the time on the channel. <laughs> I like the long straight in shot because it allows me to settle down into the straightness of my stroke, hit it good, feel like I hit it good, get rewarded for that little kind of dopamine hit. Um, and I remember lining up on this one, not using my full visualization process, but thinking more about how I was going to feel after I successfully hit it. And so I mislead myself and miss it, just shoot it into the rail. That one frustrated me too. So I've got these two distinct shots in a row where I felt like I did something silly, I was being overly hard on myself, and not trusting my process, not staying settled, not using the same kind of visualization stuff. he just goes safe here i think that was the intention and leaves me an edge on the one the two ball is right by the cue ball here it's in a tough spot so as i come up to the table i'm starting to just settle into my breath and think about you know trust your game you know how to do this i try to get a little too fancy with this one ball come off the rail and get under the two just to try to play perfect shape on the two i probably should have played to go safe on the two ball instead because I missed the stupid one ball again. <laughs> uh, so that's three. That's three shots where I had these expectations in my mind. I was not visualizing the outcome. The expectations are completely different just mentally. He's got an edge on the one, so he's going to hit that and either try to make something happen or play safe. But my process was getting kind of derailed at this point because I'm holding myself to these expectations instead of just visualizing a good outcome and focusing on how that performance is going to feel, having a good process, not just the results. All stuff we know, stuff I talk about and stuff I think about. I play a bit of a two-way here because I'm trying to settle back in. So I play into the nine, didn't really expect the nine to go, but I knew that I was going to create distance for the one ball. And still the two balls in a, in a weird spot. Nobody likes that spot. Unless you're going cross side or something, I guess you could like it. I don't know if he's got an edge on the one ball or not. It looks like he was crouching down to look at it. Maybe he does. But on the sidelines, I'm just trying to settle back down. And that was a, that was a good shot. That one I could have allowed to settle me. He's got to go on the back side, which he does. He makes a good hit. This one could go cross side if you really tighten it up. You got to add some pace to that to tighten up the angle. Play safe, put him in behind the five. I think that's what I try to do. Yeah, that, yeah. Here's another one that probably just frustrated me. I know how to do those normally, but I hit that really bad. 
and I did not get him in behind the five at all, and just sent the cue ball into open center table. <laughs> With the possibility of a 1-9 combination here, be the difference between 6-2 and 5-3. Uh, he just makes this one, which at this point, it's starting to feel like a swing, isn't it? Giving up all these opportunities and frustrating myself, and he's staying kind of level, as far as I can tell. So one ball goes. Two balls in a weird spot, as we said, but I do believe there's enough of the point to protect you from a scratch. Yeah, he, he shied away from that one a little bit. The two's right on the six. It was hard to tell if there was enough space to make it. I let him know ahead of time that I was going to try to spin it in. And sometimes these go, you have to go pretty thin into the two. It can feel risky. So with these, have somebody come watch it or make sure you let your opponent know. In this case, I make a clearly good hit. But I don't hit it in a way as to make it. Yeah, it didn't work out. That one I don't think bothers me really. Like it's disappointing, but it was a it was a touchy spot, especially thinking about getting shape on the three. Sometimes in a situation like that, you just focus on making the ball. I think that one was makeable. Looking at the four ball. It'll be okay. I mean, if he's able to make the two, shape on the three is guaranteed. And almost any shape on the three is going to take you towards the four. You should be fine. Yeah, a little pinch there. That works. Three takes you towards the four. Center ball is completely fine. You don't have to do anything crazy. Let's get, get to the middle of the table. Looks like he's going on a high outside. That one dragged its feet on the way in, but it still goes. That one well. If it's straighter on the five than you want to be. You want to be below it so it takes you towards the six. Pretty straight on the six. Bit of a table roll. <laughs> Pulled away from the rail for him. But not a lot of angle to work with, so he'll have to fabricate something here. Yeah, which he does. Basically shoots the six into the rail to create that angle and then draws away from it. And here's the shot of the rack, right? You gotta make this long shot on the seven. Shape on the eight and nine is guaranteed. Good one. Good stop shot. Love to have just three stop shots in a row, right? Nice. Well, he'll take this one for sure. Got it. That takes us over into 8-ball. I was kind of hoping we wouldn't have to go for 8-ball. <laughs> um, but some of those 9-ball racks got away from me. He made a solid on the break. And he's got to take solids. Bank the seven ball looks pretty good. That cooperates. Pushes the two down table, but it's still okay. The two would cut in the side, either side. That's what he looks at here. Seems to be. He's got the long straight shot on the three, but I think yeah, a lot of players would rather cut the two. Cuts it and it goes. Tucks himself down here. Which is not great. So the only thing he's got to look at is the six. And most players would not try to cut the six up here. They would rather back cut the six. Just like he's looking at. Run it up along this rail. 
it is cuttable and the, the 10 is not going to be in the way of that shot. These can be a little hard to judge, as I'm sure all of you know. You're really close to the ball and it's a blind pocket. You're not able to see the pocket in your peripheral. But he kind of jabs at it and glances off. I think he was maybe worried about a bad hit. But no contact, so it's not a foul stroke. Makes a good contact on the six. This is the six, but then makes the four. You should rewind because that's crazy. I looked at it a, m a number of times when I was editing this video. Uh, it was just some wild combination of it bouncing around and hitting the nine and then hitting the four back cross corner. Um, APA, it goes, you keep, you keep shooting. So good contact on the six and the four goes. Doesn't have anything on the six, so he's going to take this five or the three. Yeah, it goes for the three, which makes sense. 13 is going to block the five. But he does still have a look at the six. Might start to shoot himself into a corner here, but he can get shape on the five. Float out just enough, maybe. Um, he could be okay, right? You basically play a stop shot on the five, and it'll drag into this top short rail, and then you've got the eight. It's a clutch up situation. Before you know it, it'll be 5-4. He's looking at, uh, maybe he doesn't have the full cut on the 5? He's looking at cutting it, over cutting it into the 9, playing the 5 off the 9, the billiard off the 9. So he must not have enough of the ball to just cut it in the corner. Uh, but instead, it goes cross corner off of something else. And he's got to look at the eight. So he can back cut the eight into the side. Oh, into the point. Scary. He came away from the table saying something like, well, you can't slop in the eight. He was giving himself a hard time about the the two wild balls that went in, which I can understand like, that that happens. And that's that's the format. That's the league we play in. Like We all know that's part of it. Meanwhile, I am down table. I don't have a duck to open up. I've got a long shot on the 13. I've got a cut on the 10 in the side. I've got this shot on the 11. I'm going to take the one that gives me good position options. Guaranteed to make that 11. Not guaranteed, but I am just bearing down and trying to really focus on making the 11. First of all, didn't get great shape on anything except the 9. So we're going to spin it off the 9. And again, we're coming off of a few games that should thing. Like, I should have won those games, whatever that means. There's still a bit of residual frustration there. And I'm trying to work through that, trying to settle back into my game. I'm going to spin off this 9, and I've got the 10 ball goes in the side. I've got the 13 up in the corner. We're starting to piece through this one, and the shape's looking okay. I'm going to roll through here. That works. Any of these balls will go. Uh, the back cut on the 13 might feel a little awkward. I think that's what I looked at first. Didn't love that for some reason. Back cut on the 15 is available. I think I like that one better because you have a good chance of getting on the 13 or the 14 after. I opt for the 14, which, I don't know, it's now looking at it as my least favorite of the three. But I think I was just trying to pick easier shots this one hurt. <laughs> uh, this one definitely stung. Undercut and didn't get great shape in general. I just didn't hit it well. It just felt bad. So silly. Giving this one away. Let's see if you can put down the eight. So that one was frustrating. And 
five four now. He's starting to creep up. Nice, taking a few on the break here. So a couple stripes, and he's got an option. Kind of a stretch for the thirteen or bridge for the thirteen to open things up here. Every ball's got a pocket, so he can reach it. Not going to love that position, but the 10 ball still goes. So you can make the 10 and roll through the 7 to try to stay center table. Have some options. Oh, he was able to kind of pinch it. Maybe not able to, but decided to kind of pinch it and didn't cut the 10 properly. Oh, I'm back at the table. Let's take a lap. <laughs> take a breath, maybe. Let's think about this. We want to win this game. We want to get on the hill. Let's find our rhythm again, right? Let's stop doing silly stuff. Seven ball is eerily similar to that 14 ball that we missed. So let's make this one, cleanse our palate a little bit, and get good on the one ball, which is some of the trickiest position windows we'll have to deal with in this rack. We're okay. Overplayed it a little bit. The six does not go past the seven, so I think the hope was to clear the five six situation as early as possible. And that's no good. <laughs> so we came off the 12 and got ourselves kind of stuck here. Trying to just drop in and settle back into my rhythm, as I said. So I'm going to go on the attack here and bank the six. pace and I knew yeah I knew that I was going to be coming off of this rail unlikely to play into the five but if I did play into the five that could work out if I came past the five I felt like my chances were really good that I was going to end up in here overplayed it just slightly and I do have an edge of the 10 ball that's blocking me from getting that straight shot on the five I was hoping for so I take a minute on this one because I don't have a great way to hit anything else and I'm measuring out the rail first play into the five you've got to come pretty deep into that long rail sometimes you'll use a little bit of spin to open it up but this is really just judging that contact point on the rail i know how to make these but we've had some weird stuff coming up mentally in this game Pace was okay, just didn't cut it the way it needed to be cut. Missed my aim point, maybe. And I let him back on the table, and he doesn't have a great option. The 12 10 combo's on, the cut on the 15's on, but nothing easy. Not sure if he was trying to just make the 12 there or if he was going for the combo. But I'm back now. I've got to look at the two. Wouldn't really want to play the five from here. But playing the two means you get down below the five, and the five takes you towards the three. So that's immediately the pattern I'm sizing up. And I start to reconnect. I remember how this felt. I start to reconnect with this sort of visualizing hitting the two ball well. What's it going to feel like? What's it going to sound like? Good strokes, good steady, yeah, hit that pretty well. I got really good on the five here. The idea with this five ball, pocket it and just kind of float down. You want to be anywhere in here for the three. But I rushed it and overhit it. Silly as that. This one, ugh, that was one of those like opening clips. I was pissed about that. Now I'm on top of the three, and I just opt for a safe. This is a pretty simple safety position. <sighs> you under hit it to where you're not going to get a rail? Come on, dude. Again, <sighs> pissed. So silly. 
such a bad stroke <laughs> after a really good stroke on the two ball sort of snatchy and jabbed at the three and give him ball in hand to clear up one of his problems if i were him i think i would have gone for the 15 or the 12 clear those out first because the whatever that was the 14 down there could have been the key ball so he's still got to figure out the 12 10 just stay up above him after uh, the 12 15 i meant uh, 10 ball takes you to the 12. So this could work out. He could cut the 12 on the side. 15 is going to take you towards the 8. Oh, misses the 12 in the side. So it was a tough shot. Nothing, nothing easy. And I'm left up table. I do have a line on the 3, which is fortunate. Otherwise, I would have been looking at a jump or some kind of kick safe, something like that. I've got enough of the three to make it, as a matter of fact. Make the three. We knew we were going to hit the four ball, right? Like there was always going to be contact on that four. Hit it at a good pace. You want to make sure that you shoot that ball. You don't want to try to roll that in. But didn't get a great roll on the four ball. It's still makeable. This is still a workable out. But it's a thin cut. Run this along the rail. And the contact on the eight's possible here too. Ended up overcutting the four. Luckily we didn't scratch. Frustrated. <laughs> you can see the head shake. So stuff's starting to kind of boil up. Talking to him about not wanting to have to cut the four ball like that or something. So he's got ball in hand. He's got to solve this 12 ball problem. And if we get another look at it, we'll see what his options are. Obviously, the 15 is nice and open. The 12 from here looks like it'll go in. You could try to play it off the four to move the four out of the way for the eight. Yeah, this is one of those situations where he's got a few options and you could get overwhelmed with the options. So he might be trying to play the 12 and nudge the eight into a playable position. I think that was the intention there. Lost his cue ball because he was planning on hitting the 8. And now he's at the 50-yard line with this 15. This ball cuts. I mean, you can make that shot. It's, it's an aggressive cut. And he does go for it. Nice cut. So lower side of the pocket cooperates for him. He's now down below the 8. He's looking at it. It's close, guys. I mean, it, it might go if you hit it really well. I would be tempted to just play this. If it goes, great. If it doesn't, it's going maybe wide, and it could get in behind the four ball. That puts me in a really tough position. He calls it here. So he's going to try to bank this ball back in the side. Also tie it up. Mm. Under hits it. Misses by about a diamond and sells out the four to the eight to take this game and put me on the hill. If I go down, double check the line on the eight, feel good about that. Four balls a stretch, but it shouldn't really matter. Your shape is guaranteed on the eight. Push through that one. And I'm starting to tell myself I'm going to feel better after this. <laughs> Let me get on the hill. You missed that eight ball, man? Oh, come on. Oh, it hurts. It still hurts. I was fuming coming away from the table, missing that ball. There's no way. <sighs> he ties it up. He's breaking. Can you believe that miss? 
process looked okay. Lined up fine. It was just a mental thing. I just took it for granted, didn't properly aim it. It's all that silly stuff that can can bite us. So he's breaking. And yeah, I'm breathing. <laughs> you see those deep breaths, geez. Um so I'm starting to notice it's a really interesting thing, a turning point in this match here, the anger that's coming up. I used it to focus me. And sometimes, there's many times actually in my pool career, that anger has just fully derailed me. You see it all the time. In this case, I'm allowing the anger to just drop me down into the body. I'm not overthinking things. I'm not worrying so much about the you know perfect position, window, play, whatever. I use this anger to really focus me. And I'm playing shots like that, where I might not normally consider that because I can't account for all the things that are going to happen after the fact. I got down on that one and I was like, I don't, I don't care <laughs> what happens after that. I'm going to figure something out. And I just start picking this rack apart. And I've got a healthy pace, and I'm not scared of the cut shots. I'm not worried so much about these different positions. I know what my options are. I'm still making a plan, as you can see. I'm not just firing stuff in. It was a really interesting turning point for me in the match. I found a way to use the anger. Good cut on that 14. I'm getting down below. I know I needed to get behind this 10 and the 12. Making the 12, I can get a line on the 10 and the 15. Yeah. Not playing scared anymore. I think that was the biggest benefit of the anger coming through at this point in the match. Because I'm not tentative. I'm not poking at stuff. And I opt for this back cut on the 10 because shape from the 15 to the 10 would be a little touchy. So make the 10 now. Center pocket. We know the 15 shapes onto the 8. That's our key ball. Good, good way to do it. And ironically, this eight ball is pretty similar to the one that I missed in the last rack, so that's going to feel like a bit of redemption. Nice touch on the 15, takes us right into the line. Call this ball, take a breath. Free shot routine looks solid. Settle down into it. And just put that away, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I'm on the hill. Breaking on the hill. And I hammer these. Good break shot. Lost the cue ball a little bit, but had the top spin to keep me centered. So I made a stripe. Uh, one of each. So I've got my choice. Solids looked okay with the exception of the five ball. I knew I was going to have to do something about that. You'd be tempted to take the 15 to open up here. Either suit, it's got its complications and pros and cons. So what I do is open up with solids, and I want to get somewhere that is going to help me address the five ball as early as possible. So I take the three and get me in line for something that's going to put me on the seven and nudge the five ball out of there. The six can do that. But the way that it rolled out, it put me where I needed to be on the 7 to push the 5 into a playable spot. And what I looked at there is once I make the 7 and push out the 5, the 4 is my bailout. I'll be able to play the 4 to get on something after. So a bit of a punch stroke there to push out the 5. Works great. I've got the 4 queuing over the 12, but big deal. That anger's just got me feeling like, who cares? That's fine. I wanted to roll in 
I knew I was going to roll into the one. I was hoping to shape the six in the side. But now the tough part is the six in the side getting shape on something is kind of complicated. So what I end up playing for, and this is just pure DGAF. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play the six into the five because why not? And I'm going to shape the one. Big pocket. Get out of here with that 12 ball. Got into a good line on the one. I can get above the six, try to play between the 13 and the eight. Above the six is definitely safer, but we have a steep angle on the one ball. So you might be better served just playing down here or trying to play down ahead of the 8 and the 13. But I didn't care. I'm just going to play this and see what I get. Make sure to make the one ball was the thing. Just put this one ball down and I can deal with it, whatever comes up. In this case, it's a jump shot. Big deal. Hooked myself behind the 13. And the mindset was, I don't care. I'm going to make this ball and I'm going to get out. Don't care what it takes. It really settled me. It was fascinating. Pop that in. Good shape on the eight. So this is the kind of stuff that, that I really like to do on the channel is piece apart my mental state, how it's affecting my game, and use that to improve. So if you like that kind of stuff, and you're not subscribed, you should do it. Put that one away for the game. Whew. Kind of a crazy one, right? Um, really interesting results, really interesting mental state for that. And gave away a lot of games. The shoulds were coming up. I should be winning by more or whatever. That stuff does not matter. There's no shoulds here. There's just you and your process, right? So big lessons to take away from this game. Letting the emotions help you is possible. You just have to know how to do that. And I had some good progress with that in this match and letting your game be more about having a good process than expecting good results because those expectations will really jump up and get you so we'll, we'll keep talking about that we'll talk about that more but really good evidence here today hope you guys enjoyed this one like i said subs and likes and everything helps out the channel a lot i know you regulars are out there i love having you guys here and having talking about all this stuff in the comments so feel free to drop comments there's more content on the way and i will look forward to seeing everybody in the next one